Hello, welcome to The Revealing. I am your host, Pavarotti, here to bring you information on the Idaho 4 case. As a disclaimer, this channel is for entertainment purposes only. These are my opinions. I'm not here to slander anyone. And with that being said, let's get started. Now today, I wanted to go through some of the questions that I received from my commenters. A lot of them have expressed their dislike and the fact that I don't go through and, and engage in the comment section very often. And I apologize for that. I do not have a, a whole lot of time to go through and engage in the comment section. That's not a very good excuse, I know. But I do read all of the comments. And after I read the comments, I always put a thumbs up on every one of them just to let you know that I have read them. I don't know if that even lets you know that. I'm, honestly, I don't know a whole lot about YouTube. And just so you know, when I started this, I didn't start this to try to become some popular YouTube personality. Okay, I started this because I was upset with the media and the way that they portrayed this case and I was upset with law enforcement because I know law enforcement is, and the prosecution is steering the media. And law enforcement knows what happened in this case. I have no doubt about it. But they want to portray a different narrative. And that is, in my opinion, terrible for us as the public. They want to keep us dumbed down. I don't like it when they lie to us. They don't tell us what we're supposed to know, like we're little kids. So I wanted to help get the word out and that's why I started this. And with that being said, as I went through my, my comments, went through them this morning, I was looking for my questions. I, one thing is pretty clear, my commenters don't really ask a lot of questions. <laughs> they, they really give their opinions, which I appreciate. That's why I really enjoy reading them. And um, the question part is just, it's, it's, you know, there's just not many of them. You know, from, from what I've looked at this morning, I have a lot of comments, so I, I went through several of them. So I did pull out a few questions, maybe not the questions that you really want me to answer. I know a lot of the questions revolve around myself, and I, I really don't want to answer too many questions about myself. I'd rather keep that to myself. And um, I like to focus things on, you know, the topic that we're discussing and, um, and not me. I'm not the topic. So just to go through a few of them, though, for you. The first one I wanted to go through, and I could tell this was a sweet lady. Uh, but I'm not going to read the names of who asked these questions because, to be very frank, when I read usernames, it's just hard for me to even read the usernames most of the time. Um, this question, though, very simple question. It's, a, it's about Buddy the dog that was skinned a few weeks before the murder, uh, before the unaliving. I got to watch that, folks. Anytime that you don't say unaliving, guess what? YouTube flags you, and I have to go through a whole nother process just to get my, my video uploaded. So unaliving. Sorry, YouTube. Um, is there a connection to the crime? I'm going to give you my personal opinion. Uh, my personal opinion is no, there's absolutely no connection between Buddy the dog and the crime. And here's why. Buddy the dog was not the victim's dog. If this was going to be a message to the victims or anybody else, then it would have been done to the victim's dog, not a neighbor, you know, way down the street. What probably happened to Buddy, if I was investigating that case, the first people that I would look to would be those folks' neighbors. You know, Buddy may have been a yappy little pup. He was cute. He may have been yappy. Some people don't like yappy dogs, and some people are mean. 
So they may have gotten frustrated with Buddy Yappin and actually did that, which is terrible. You know, I'd like to, I'd like to get a hold of them. But that would be who I would go to to see what happened to Buddy the dog is I would go check the neighbors. Um, hey, P, can a crime scene be cleaned of DNA? If so, can it also be polluted? The only thing that I know of that will get rid of organic material is bleach. Okay, so you can clean a crime scene with bleach. However, there's two downsides to that. Number one is you almost never get all of the organic material. The only way you could possibly get all the organic material is if you cleaned it with bleach, turned out the light, sprayed luminol everywhere, and then found out what you missed and then went back and cleaned it again. Now, the downside to that is there are simple tests that they can do to determine if a crime scene has been cleaned with bleach. So even if you do clean it, chances are they're gonna know you cleaned it. Um, and then if there's anything else, I'm not aware of it. Did you ever think one of his teachers recommended him to go to Idaho to finish out his degree? That is a fair question. And you know what? One of his teachers may very well have recommended him to go to, not Idaho, but Washington State University to finish out his degree. I think the, the thing that we've got to keep in mind is, though, the correlation to rhymes with alpaca cannot be overlooked. Okay, those, those gentlemen most certainly knew each other in Pennsylvania, and they were together making a plan when they moved to Washington State University on the Board of Idaho. Now, what that plan is, I have laid out my theory on it. But as you know, I'm about to start a new series where I'm gonna be altering that theory and laying out something a little bit different. So I'm not gonna get into it right now, but no, that is a fair question. Please talk about the bodies and how come no one took a pic of them coming out of the house. Well, that, to be very frank with you, I imagine that was a very sensitive time and the law enforcement personnel knew that the media and everybody involved was, was wanting to see those bodies come out of that house. So I think they went through great pains to mask them removing the bodies from that house. They probably used um, diversion as well as camouflage to remove those bodies from the house because they know that everybody wanted to see that. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't look at the fact that you didn't get a, a video of that as some way to some way to generalize, was it the crime not really a crime? Did it not really happen? Or maybe it happened somewhere else? No, that crime happened there and that crime happened and those bodies were removed. They just took great pains to, to make sure that it wasn't captured on video. Boston, nope. Okay, and then the last one I'm, I'm gonna go over is, why are you protecting the roommates? What about the eight hour time delay? Now I know that's a big one. And I do have a theory about that. I have steered away from talking about the roommates because I don't still believe in any scenario that they were involved in any way in this tragic event. However, we cannot totally deny the eight hour time delay and the fact that those roommates didn't call 911. So if we use critical thinking, Boston, come on, man. If we use critical thinking, chances are those roommates know a little bit more than what has been broadcast to the public. I imagine that those roommates were probably instructed 
in a pretty clear manner as these atrocities were taking place to stay in their rooms and to not dial 911. And that's why the next day they still wouldn't dial 911. They had to wait for somebody else to get there for them to dial 911 because they weren't going to go against what they were probably told. That is my thinking on the case. But I'm going to get into that much more in depth in my new series. So with that being said, that's all I have written down at this point. The dog won't cooperate. Uh, please like and subscribe to my channel. I do appreciate all your comments. I do read all of your comments. I'm sorry if I don't respond to all your comments. But until next time, and I'll, I'll have that other video out here shortly. Until next time, Pavarotti's out.